All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna be talking about the most important thing that people always forget, and that is to back up your NAS. Your NAS is a great device, but the thing is, RAID is not a backup. That extra redundancy you get where a disk can fail and you still have all your data is not a backup because you don't know what can happen to that unit. That unit can break and corrupt all the files. It can get hacked and encrypt all the files. It can get lost in fire or water damage. So many things can happen where you would just lose all of your data. And so this video is really going to be going over about four different options you've got, depending on your exact use case, for a home user who really needs to back up their data. For business users, there's what's called the 3 to one backup solution. So you've got three total copies of the data, two of them are on-site, normally active and backup on-site, and one copy off-site. And that is the bare minimum that most businesses should be attesting to. For home users, I really consider it to be a 2-1 backup solution. Really, you just need a good off-site copy of your data because downtime is probably not crucial for you as long as you make sure your backups are working. And so we're gonna go over the different options you've got and how you can do it cost effectively and in a way that's always going to work for you. All right, and so everything I'm gonna talk about here is an off-site backup. This means that the actual data from the backup is not at the same place that the NAS is. This is because in general, your backups being attached to your main storage doesn't really help you in most cases. Fire, water damage, or theft, all you lose the data. Or if your NAS gets hacked and encrypts all the data, then if the hacker had administrative privileges, could also just delete your backups as well, rendering them useless. And so that's why everything I'm gonna mention here is an offsite backup, and I would highly recommend it for anybody who's really backing up your data. Having a hard drive hooked up to your NAS, backing it up with hyper backup, is a good first start to a backup, but is not a perfect backup solution and is really only gonna help you if DSM gets corrupted or something like that. All right, and so you've got a few different options really depending on how good you are with technology and how much data you really have. And one of Synology's best features is their capability to do backups really, really well. Hyper Backup is a phenomenal application that has a lot of versatility and can allow you to back up to a lot of different things. You can back to AWS, you can back up to another Synology, you can back up to a hard drive, you can back up to just about anything, and it works really well. And so we're gonna talk about the different methods for Hyper Backup that you really should look at. And it totally depends on your price point, how critical your data is, as well as how much data you've got. And honestly, how technically inclined you are. So one thing I would highly recommend for any home user is make sure that 100 gigs of photos that you've got is backed up to a cloud provider. Synology C2 for 100 gigabytes is $10 a year. Make sure that whatever photos you've got are on a cloud plan, something like that, because it's going to cost you $10 a year. And for most people, those few photos are by far the most important thing. You can also add in your tax documents there, but basically put all the super critical stuff on a cloud plan somewhere. Just have it be set up, and honestly, I would use Synology C2. It is a little bit more pricey than other offerings. You could do Backblaze or AWS, but if you're doing this just 100 gigs of your most critical files, then it is going to be by far the easiest to set up, the most resilient, and is going to be dummy proof. That's the important thing. You wanna make sure that this thing just keeps running no matter what happens, and that's why I would really recommend Synology C2. It is just pretty bulletproof and works really well. I would highly recommend it, especially for those 100 gigs of files where you just need to make sure they've got a backup. So that's my two cents. Make sure those critical files are backed up. That actually reminds me of one other thing you really need to look into is whenever you set up hyper backup, you need to also set up an email notifications for your Synology. I've got a video on how to do this. It's really easy. You can just attach your Gmail account to it. If you don't have a Gmail account, they're free. Just make one and have it set up so your Synology can send emails through your Gmail account on your behalf. This way, if a backup fails, you will get an email about it. A backup that is not tested and is failing is not a backup. You might still have some of your data, but too often have I heard of companies who have a critical failure and need to go to their backups only to find that the backup server has been offline for eight months and they never got a notification of it and they just thought it was working. And that's why it's really critical to have the email notification for failed backups and also weekly backup checks. 
Hyper Backup has a great feature where once a week you can set it up to go through and make sure the backup can be restored. And so I would highly recommend enabling that as well because it's just going to save you and make sure your backups are working. All right, and so now that you make sure you've got those really crucial files backed up somewhere, now we need to talk about those files that maybe are not so crucial. For photographers, it totally depends on what you need. So maybe you don't need the past 20 years of your raw files that's 15 terabytes. Maybe you do. And so you've got to really choose the amount of data that you really need and want to make sure have it off-site backup of. And for that, you've got four different options. So first off is Synology C2. It is not cheap. It is $70 a terabyte a year for its larger plan. Now, this will save you from just about anything. And for users who are not super technically inclined, I would highly recommend it. And then the next option you've got that's also still really easy to set up but is a much lower price point, is a, another NAS at a friend or family member's house. I would recommend making sure it has BTRFS, and you can just buy an old Synology NAS off eBay and set it up as a hyper backup destination. This means that you can just stick huge hard drives in there and you don't have the reoccurring cost. It's all up front, and if you do it for a few years, it will easily pay itself off, especially as you get into larger and large, larger storage sizes. And so that's a really great solution and it's still Synology. So it's really easy and honestly really dummy proof. The reason I recommend having BTRFS enabled on the NAS is that way you can have snapshots also on the NAS itself, on the backup NAS. That way, say somebody gets administrative access to your Synology NAS, your main NAS, and they go, okay, I'm just going to delete his backups. That way, when I demand crypto, he's going to pay me. Well, what you can do then is use the BTRFS snapshots to restore the backup on the backup server itself. This means that though they think they deleted the backups, they actually did not. And so that's one of the really powerful things about Synology BTRFS and why having two different NASes requiring two different logins is a really good idea because then if one is breached, the other is not. And so that way you don't have a single point of failure where somebody can take out your primary and your backups. Now I've got a video on that and I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the description, but it's a really great setup and can save you a ton of money compared to cloud plans. The third and probably the easiest to set up, though you need to make sure you're doing it, is just an external hard drive that you bring in once a month and back up your NAS. You're not going to get the same flexibility and you're going to have to remember to do it. Personally, I am not the person who's going to remember to plug in the hard drive once a month. I'll do it for the first three times and then I'm going to forget about it and it's going to be two years out of date by the time my NAS breaks and I need to use it. But for people who are really good about this stuff, it can be a really cheap way and it's going to be cold. This means you can stick it in a safety deposit box and no matter what a hacker does, they can't get access to that drive. And so it's a really great solution for people who are going to remember to do that. The thing is, you need to know, are you the person who's going to remember to bring it out of the safety deposit box once a month, or are you just going to put it on the back burner and never remember it? Another thing to think about is, what happens to your data in the meantime? If you're somebody who has crucial files that's changing all the time, maybe like a ledger on your NAS, this is probably not the best solution, because if it's three weeks out of date, how useful is that data to you? It's going to be a lot better than no data, but for stuff that is always changing, that you have the primary copy on your NAS, this might not be the best solution. And so it's really important, especially in these times where hackers are making a lot of money by encrypting people's files, is to make sure that one, your NAS is secure, but two, make sure your backups are secure. And so that's why it's crucial to make sure that whatever crucial data you've got on your NAS is backed up appropriately. And always go through once a month and make sure you can at least poke around your backups and try restore. Leave a calendar reminder, anything like that, just to make sure you do it. Because a backup that doesn't restore is a pretty useless backup. All right, well, that's going to be it for this. Go and leave any other tutorials you like to see me make in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.